Hey everyone, this tutorial is going to focus on the new page full screen rows feature which was just added in Salient 7.5. So I know a lot of you have been digging the new demos, but you're probably also pretty curious as to how those have been created. Salient 7.5 has brought with it three new demos, the product, service, and app demo, and all of them are actually using this new page full screen rows feature. So just to go over the basics as to what the feature actually does, in a nutshell, it'll take every one of your Visual Composer rows and turn that into its own full width, full height section that can be navigated to using regular scrolling, keyboard controls, or the optional dot navigation. So that means if hypothetically we had three rows in here, each containing their own various content, that there would be three different full screen sections on your page. I'm just going to delete those. So the way to actually configure and activate this option is actually all handled down here at the bottom of the page. Now above the page header settings meta box, you'll see that there's a new one for the page full screen rows. Once you go over to it, you'll see that the only option is to turn it on or off. All of the other options are hidden by default, so the page space isn't taken up by extra options that aren't being used in case you're not using the feature. So if we go down here and we turn it on, you'll see all the options for it are now exposed, and the page header meta box, which was previously below it, has now disappeared. This is because if you're using the page full screen rows feature, the page header will no longer be available to you as an option, as the page full screen rows is going to completely take over the page. So let's just quickly go over the basics of these options, and then we'll create a sample page just to illustrate in more depth how they actually work. So a lot of them are pretty self-explanatory, but the first one we have is the animation that's going to happen between rows. And we have three options with the initial release of this feature, more to come in the future. And by default, we have the scroll option check, but there's two additional ones for a parallax or a zoom out with parallax. Because the three new demos are only using the second two options, I think in this tutorial, it would only be appropriate to continue on with, with the default scroll just to see what it looks like. Here next, we have the animation speed three options for simplification. All the demos are using medium, but you also have two additional options in case that's either too slow or too fast for your taste. Now the third option could benefit from a little bit further explanation right now. Adding anchors to the URL. If you leave this option unchecked, when you're navigating between your rows in your page, the URL is going to remain the same the entire time. What this means is that if you're trying to link someone your page at a specific section, that won't be possible, since the URL is just going to lead them to the top of the page. If you turn the option on, the URL is actually going to change based upon the name that you supply for each of your rows. This will allow for easier linking and in all just a more intuitive navigation for anyone using your site. Now once we start creating this page for the tutorial, I'll actually highlight the input in the row settings just to point this out. But for now let's move on and check out the next option. Here we have the row BG image animation. As of right now, there is only one additional option, and that is the Ken Burn zoom, which is a very slight and subtle zoom for your background image, if you're using any on your rows. The three demos are also showing off this feature. Now, since this is a global option, it will affect all of your rows. In case you have some rows that you don't want this to apply to, there is an option that I've also added in the Visual Composer row settings to override and disable this. Moving on, we have the dot navigation styling. This 7.5 has shipped with three different styles available to you and the fourth to hide it. By default, we have transparent, which means the row name, which will be displayed on hover of the dot, will actually have no tooltip background and will either be white for rows that are set to the light color or the dark color, which you have defined in your salient options panel. If that option doesn't fit the style of your site, we also have a tooltip option, which is currently shown on the product demo. That will give you a nice little flat styled tooltip. And last, we have the tooltip alt, which is shown in the service demo. That will add a white background with a nice little box shadow to it behind all of the dots. So as you may have noticed, 
using the dot navigation and, and scrolling through the sections is actually not the only way you can link between them. The rows in a full screen setup will actually respond to anchor changes in the URL, which means that if you, if you had a navigation just at the top of your page, you could link to these sections, just like in a regular animated anchors setup. I even got a little bit funky, and to demonstrate this further, in the product demo, I created links between the sections in the off-canvas menu area, just to highlight that this is a very flexible solution. Moving on to the next option, we have the row overflow settings. Now by default, if you have the provide scroll bar on, when you have content in your row that's greater than the screen height, there will actually be a scroll bar that appears within the row that will allow users to get through all of the content. So with the other option, we have hide extra content, which will obviously just prevent users from being able to scroll through the row itself if there is content that overflows. Now, while this might not sound like a good idea, there are some cases where it could actually enhance the design of your site. In the app demo, for example, I'm actually using the hide extra content option because each of the rows contains a fairly small amount of text and it's not ever going to reach a point where it would overflow anyway. But what would overflow are some of the images of devices that I've placed. So just switching over to that demo to illustrate, the very first section, you can see we have some text to the right and an image of a phone to the left. Now by default, if we had the scroll overflow on, because this phone is actually going over the screen height, there would be a scroll bar here, and when the user tried to scroll to the next section, it would scroll down a little bit to expose the rest of the phone, which, which is not ideal for the look that I was going for. So now you can see if we attempt to scroll, it will ignore the fact that there is actually extra content there and just go to the next section. Going back over into our tutorial site, the last option we have here is for the page footer. So by default, we have the none option selected. However, you can see that it is possible for you to insert what would be your normal WordPress footer at the very end of your page after all of your rows, or you can actually just change your last row to not be a full height row and to be inserted at the very bottom. Also, switching back over into the demo, I have used this option for the last row. So in my setup, there is a row that just contains a Nectar social element and some text. So, We've gone over all of the basics of what these configuration options are for. Let's just head on over and create a sample page that will illustrate these further. So I think we're going to stick to just a few rows and then we will experiment with the footer. So following that blueprint, let's make just right off the bat four rows. and. Let's go down here and turn the page footer to be the last row and head back up. So that means that this row will actually act as the footer and will not inherit the full width, full height attributes that the other rows will. Row, I'm just going to add a text block, get in some lorem ipsum dummy text really quickly, and then we're going to actually edit the row and configure some of this design to be pleasing to the eye. So let's just add a background image. I've already actually imported the um, service demo, so I have those demo images, and I've, and I've also added a couple additional images just so we have them. I'm just going to add this image of an office space, and let's add a little color overlay to this. Let's just make it dark, make that heavy. And you can see here now, there's actually a new option that's been added to all of our visual composer rows, which were previously not there and will disappear if you turn off the page full screen rows. And that is for the full screen row position. By default, it will be at the middle, which means that any content we put in this row will just be centered in the middle of the page within the full screen row. So we're just gonna leave that as is. And the only thing else I want to do right now is just change this to a light text color since we just added a dark background. The text would be very hard to read if we didn't do that. So moving on to the second row, let's do something a little bit different than the first to give it a little bit of a pop. 
let's add a background image. I already have those two uploaded, so we can choose the other one that's showcased on the service demo. And this time, let's add a gradient overlay instead of just a regular color overlay. Now, some of you probably haven't been experimenting with this that much, but it is a pretty cool new and powerful feature that came in 7.0. So we can change that to very heavy, so we have a lot of the color dominating over the image. And just make sure that we have that text color set to light, and that should be good. So for this, instead of just adding a text block directly inside of the row, I'm actually going to add an inner row. I'm just going to add in the same text as shown in one of the section on the services demo, which is the best way to send money in an H2. And we can just duplicate that inner row, getting some more text from the demo. This doesn't need to be an H2, just a paragraph. You can actually set max width now on text blocks. This will just keep it more contained to the actual width of the title above it for good look. And in our last row, we actually don't need a text block. Let's just put a Nectar button. Now the Nectar button was actually added as a visual composer element, previously only available as a Nectar shortcode. Now it's a whole lot easier for you to configure. So for this, let's just add in some text and use one of the new styles added with 7.5. Give it a little bit of top margin to get it away from that text. Now for this last row before the footer, just to explain how things are done a little bit more on the demos. You may have noticed that in the last section of the product demo, there is this grid-like structure that's been created. Previously, a layout like this would have required custom development, but in a full screen setup, it's actually pretty simple. So going back over into the demo, how this is created is by setting the full screen row position instead of being vertically centered to the top of the bottom there's actually a, an option for full height now what that's going to do is take every column that we have in this row and actually scale it to be the full height of the page so to make something similar let's just do a three column setup and put a text block in each so now each one of these columns is going to be display as the full height of the page so if we set a background color or a background image, it would actually give us a nice grid-like structure. So let's set some varying hues of blue just to illustrate and put some padding on here. 5% for each one. And let's just change the blue slightly each time so that you can clearly see where the columns begin and end. 5% and this one will be, whoops. This one will be the brightest. Now we just need to change the text color. And since we want this text to also display in the middle of all these columns, we can just use this content position option in combination. Also, very important for creating a grid structure like we're going after, we need to make sure that the row type is actually set to full with content. Most of you are familiar with what this does, but it simply makes sure that the site container is ignored and each one of these columns or anything inside of a full with content row will hit the very edge of the page. Now before we jump into configuring the footer, I think we've done enough work and should definitely check out how that's looking. Now here you can see we have the first row that we created with the dark overlay and the lower MIPS and text just centered in the middle. Switching over into the next section, we have this awesome gradient section similar to that of the demo with this 3D transparent button. Pretty easy to scroll up and down between those sections, or we can use the tooltips. Notice that in the dot navigation, there is no actual text showing out like in the demos because we have not provided those names yet in the rows. We'll do that as soon as we get back into the back end and wrap up this section. Scrolling down into our last section, the full height rows, we have the three blue columns just as expected. Now, if you wanted to have within one of these columns more rows that are split like the product demo, it's actually very simple. Let's go back into the edit page and explain how that's done. So scrolling down here, how it would work is, let's just delete one of these text blocks. If you put an inner row inside of one of these columns, it's actually gonna have its height adjusted to be the full height of the page as well. Now, if you just have one row, that doesn't really do anything for you. But for every other row you add, the height gets evenly broken up depending upon the number of columns. 
Therefore, if we have two rows, each one of these heights is now going to be set to 50%. And if we had three rows, each one of these heights is now going to be set to 33% of the page height. For this example, let's just use two, and we can just add a background image onto each one of those using the same ones that we already have in the sections above, just for example. And one on this. Now, finally, to wrap up this section, the row is already looking pretty good, but we could go a step further and start ena enabling some animations. Now, it's also worth noting that in each one of your rows within this full page setup, the animations that you have set for each of the rows are going to trigger every time you reach the row in the setup, which is great for creating really appealing pages. So for each one of these columns, let's just actually enable that to get a look at how fancy it could be. Let's do a reveal from bottom for the first one. And let's do a reveal from the top for the second one. And let's give that a little bit of a delay. And for the third one, let's do another reveal from the bottom with the highest delay. So it's going to come in one after the other and be a pretty appealing effect. Also, to touch again on why the tooltips weren't showing up, we need to add, if we so want them, to have names. So when you have the full screen option on, there will be this extra input called row name. We can just name this whoops, section two, section one, and section three, just so that we can see them display. Just to show off more options, I'm going to now change this from a default scroll to, let's say, a parallax. And we can change this tooltip to the tooltip alt to look even more like the service demo. Update the page. The first section has remained unchanged. Our tooltip names are now showing up over here on the side. So we can use this to easily get between it. Going down to the second one, we can see the parallax changing from the first to the second. And the third section, with all of its animated glory, is now located down here. Ah, we can see that the padding that we had initially set on the third row is still there. So quickly we can just remove that to get the flush look that we were hoping for. Or at least I was hoping for. Which means that you might have been hoping for it too. Hopefully. Just verify that change has taken place. Boom, boom, boom. Nice look. We can now just add the footer and then this would be a completed full screen page for the tutorial. So whatever we add into this row will indeed show up. We could just do text block. Thanks for watching the tutorial. And give that perhaps an H2. And let's see, the last row was blue. We could get away with um, just doing, let's say, a dark gray, some light. And we're going to need to give this column some padding because there's nothing stopping, now that the row is in full height, the text from just hitting the very top of the row that it's contained in. So let's do a little bit of that, center it, and we should be done. So we have our first section, our second section, the third, awesomeness, and then the footer. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for the full screen functionality. Obviously, this is just a taste of what can be accomplished. This has been in the works for quite some time. I definitely appreciate you guys bearing with me and waiting patiently for this update to be released. I know it took a little bit longer than some of the other ones in the past, but I hope that you really do enjoy this and are able to create some amazing designs that would have definitely not been possible prior to 7.5. Look forward to seeing what you create. If you want to share any of your works in the comments section, I always love to see them. So until the next tutorial, guys.